Joining us in the studio is Professor Lutz Wiesotzki. He's a cosmologist, an astrophysicist, a guy who really believes in rational science. And now you're faced with something like dark matter. How do you feel about that? Does that make you uncomfortable? Well, it makes me feel pretty well, first of all, because we have a big challenge that we're facing. It is clearly uncomfortable to, to deal with something that we really don't understand. Yeah. But it is something that we have, we're facing in science all the time. Yeah. But it sounds like a trick you make up. You don't understand, so you come up with a new particle with dark matter. It is a trick, um, but science has to uh, look for tricks. We're always facing things that we cannot explain, so we have mm -hmm. to expand our theoretical understanding, and that in some way yeah, means that we have to resort to tricks. <laughs> and do you have any idea what is behind uh, dark matter? What's the secret behind it? Is it a particle or what is it? It is, I would say, most likely it is some sort of elementary particle that we haven't found yet, which doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And um, we see the action of dark matter in all scales in the universe. So it's not really something that we're completely groping in the dark. We see the gravity um, pull off dark matter on, in various instances. And will we ever have a chance to look at this dark matter here on Earth? Will I ever, ever maybe have the chance to give you a handful of dark matter No here? way. No, no way. way. No way. Why not? Uh, first of all, um, one of the probably strong properties of dark matter is that it doesn't interact with normal matter other than gravity. That means and I couldn't hold on to you it? You couldn't or? hold on to it because no. you don't hold on to something with, by the action of gravity. You keep to this table, not by gravity, but because this table is solid. Mm -hmm. And that's one problem. And the other one is that dark matter is dominant in the universe at large, but the mean density is so low that we would probably not, I mean, we could completely ignore the density of dark matter in this room. Mm -hmm. They thought that the, the strange neutrinos, these ghost particles passing through everything were dark matter. Is that not true? Well, they're probably dark matter of, of a kind, ah. but they're not really fulfilling this criterion for what we call cold dark matter, that, is, that it is clumping, that it acts all this gravity pull. Neutrinos are too fast. They are relativistic mm -hmm. particles. They stream enormously fast, and, and they don't really create this clumping that we need. How important is dark matter actually for the development of our universe? Fundamental. It is absolutely fundamental, because without dark matter, we wouldn't even exist. So it's, it's really the, the density fluctuations in the very early universe that um, grow over time by the act of gravity. And that is the origin of, of all structure in the universe, including us. And if dark matter hadn't been there already at that time, then these um, fluctuations were way too small. Yeah? We wouldn't, uh -huh. we'd still be, everything would be a, a homogeneous gas. You need, you need something to accelerate, which is the dark matter. Absolutely. What does that mean for the future of our universe? It means that if we yeah, really think we understand gravity, including dark matter, then we can make pretty good predictions mm -hmm. about the future of our galaxy, of galaxy clusters, and of the large-scale structure of the universe. Thanks a lot for the talk, Professor Lutz Wiesotsky.